everyone, I'm Cami, and I'm a developer advocate on the Oculus Developer Team. Welcome to episode five of the Oculus for Developers video series, where we highlight and provide quick overviews and best practices on new releases, tool updates, and more. If you missed past video, check out the description box below. So today, Plorama and I are going to dive into Oculus Developer Hub. Let's get into it with a short intro from Plorama. Hi, I'm Clarama. I'm a product manager on the Oculus Developer Team. Oculus Developer Hub, or commonly known as ODH, uh, is a development tool for Quest headsets that streamlines a lot of the complex task flows that are involved in the VR app development experience. So there are three goals for ODH. One, simplify development, starting with reducing everyday friction. Two, improve discovery and awareness of the latest relevant tools and updates, all centralized uh, in one place so you're not missing the latest and greatest news for the Oculus developer platform. Uh, and three, keeping VR development fun. Obviously, ODH has so much more to go to truly uh, revolutionizing your workflow. Um, and so we are constantly pushing regular updates to offer more solutions that can help with um, just really making everyday development a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and toss it to Cami so she can show you all the commonly used features of ODH. To download ODH, you'll have to select your operating system, as ODH currently supports Mac and Windows. Open the application and log in using your Oculus credentials, which must be the same as you've used for logging into the headset. When you've successfully logged in, you'll see the ODH homepage, and this is where you can find all relevant news, updates, and features as it pertains to Quest development. Clicking on the My Device panel, this is where you'll find a lot of the common functionality that you would in ADB, but again, with an intuitive UI built on top of it, optimized for VR. All the functionality you see on this page, you can actually do without your device being hardwired into your computer. To do so, just toggle ADB over Wi-Fi, and then you can unplug and see that the functionality is still available for you to interact with your device. So diving into some of the functionality you see on this page, we have the ability to screencast, record, and capture what is currently being displayed on your headset. These features are some of our most commonly used, and as you can imagine, it yields the ability to easily share experiences and moments across your team. We also have a quick access to some of these features in the lower left-hand panel. And now you can see the live casting from my device. So the next feature that I wanted to showcase is the ability to send custom commands to your device. The commands you create in ODH also scale as you can import and export various commands into your application. Before creating new commands, it's worth mentioning that under the settings panel, you can actually update your ADB path that ODH uses. Jumping back to my device, let's get into how to create a custom command. So to add a new command, you can click Create Command. You can name the command, put in the command prompt, and then toggle to see the display output from said command. To access the serial ID of your device, we have a static string available for you to broaden the scope of what you're able to interact with across all Quest devices. And then once you've created a command, you can simply click Run, and the output will appear according to the command that you've written. So as you can see, as you start building your own custom commands, you can create a suite that you can export with your team or similarly import commands that maybe have been shared with you. In everything you do with ODH in your headset, you have the ability to view the device logs. So clicking on the device logs button in the lower left hand corner, you can download or copy the most recent logs through this window, search and filter through them, and see how your device and application are interacting with each other. Along with the device logs and everything that we've mentioned, there are specific metrics that you can toggle your view inside the headset and in the logs. In the metrics HUD that you would see in your device, you have the ability to view things like FPS, GPU and CPU usage, memory performance, and tailor those visuals and output to what's important to you. Back in the actions panel, you can actually view the metrics files that are on your device and this will give you information about the activity on your device and what was affected of those metrics during that session. The final feature we'd like to show you today is about deploying builds to your device and to your application. 
Here in the apps panel of the My Device section, you can see that you have the ability to drag and drop or upload APKs to your device. And with one click, you have the ability to launch the experience straight to your device. And finally, in the app distribution panel, you can select any of the applications that you have in your organization. And through a pretty simple flow, you can update and upload new builds to prod, alpha, beta, and so on. Throughout ODH, we've built in the ability for you to give feedback in the tool. We value your input as it helps us to shape the direction and roadmap of ODH. To give us feedback, feel free to utilize the developer forums or report a bug directly in the tool. If you'd like to see more content about how to optimally use Oculus Developer Hub, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Thank you, Cami, so much. Obviously, there's plenty more features in ODH for you to explore. As always, thank you so much for continuing to make the Oculus community great. We look forward to seeing what you build with the Oculus Developer Hub. Until next time.